All right, Algebra 2, 8-3 is what we're looking at today. And uh, we're graphing hooray, reciprocal functions. So first we're going to look at the parent graph of reciprocal functions. So the parent of a reciprocal function. So um, the parent looks like this, f of x equals 1 over x. So this is a, a hyperbola. And um, let's, let's graph this and then we're going to write a little bit more information over here. So let's go ahead and draw a graph a coordinate plane and then we're going to make fairly large delineations here okay x f of x and so we're going to do um, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3 we want to know what this thing looks like Okay, negative 3. So when you plug in negative 3 here, you get 1 over negative 3, so negative 1 third. When you plug in negative 2, you get negative 1 half. When you plug in negative 1, 1 over negative 1 is negative 1. You plug in 0, you have 0 as the denominator, so that's not okay, that's undefined. Plug in 1, 1 over 1 is 1, 1 over 2 is 1 half, and 1 over 3 is 1 third. So let's graph these things. These are all points, right? So negative 3, negative 1 third. Negative 3, 1, 2, 3. Negative 1 third, that's about right here. Negative 2, negative 1 half. Negative 2, negative 1 half, that's about right here. Negative 1, negative 1, we're right there. 0 is undefined. So I'm going to put a dotted line at x equals 0. And that is my asymptote. We'll look at that in just a second. 1, 1. 1, 1 is right here. Oh, I, am I missing something? Okay. No, no, we're not. We're fine. Oh, that's what I'm missing. Yeah, we're good. Um, 2 and uh, 1 half. And 3 and 1 third. There we go. Okay. So the way this looks here, see how this is kind of going like this? goes like this. This graph looks like this. It goes closer and closer to that x equals 0, but never gets there. Same thing with this one. goes like this and goes like that. Now, <clears throat> we saw why x can't be 0, right? Because it's in the denominator. But we haven't talked about why y can't be 0. If I have 1 over something, what can I plug in for x to get 0? Go ahead, do all the work you can. I can't plug anything in for x to make this be 0. It doesn't work. So um, we've got this hyperbola, and it has asymptotes at x equals 0. This is a line, x equals 0 and um, f of x, or y, equals 0. So that's this line right here. All right. Two asymptotes, a horizontal asymptote and a vertical asymptote. The domain is um, all the y values that are included, so negative infinity to 0, negative infinity, to 0 and 0 to positive infinity. Now I think I put a thing like this here but I don't remember for sure. I think it says like an upside down U. I'm not that good of a math teacher. Range. The range, same as the, um, ends up looking the same as the, the domain. Oh my gosh, did I just do domain as the Y values? Oh, I should be fired. Domain is the x values, remember? 
values. Uh, it's been a long morning already. Okay, domain, so from z negative infinity to zero is my, the x values that are included. Negative infinity to zero, boom, and then zero to positive infinity. Those are the x values. Domain is x values. Goodness gracious. The range is the y values, but it's the same. Um, it ends up looking the same as this. Negative infinity to zero, zero to positive infinity. Wow. Hopefully you caught that. And you're like, Mr. V, domain is x, domain is x. Okay. Um, now you might also see the domain and the range both look like this. Negative infinity to positive infinity where um, x is not 0 and f of x is not 0. So we're saying the same kind of a thing, but um, this, is, this is a little bit better. I like this better. Okay, limitations on domain. Remember, domain is the x values, Mr. V. Limitations, limitations on domain x values. Um, example, determine the value of x for which three over two x plus five is not defined. So what we're doing here is we're saying, look at the denominator. Where do we have a problem? Where is the denominator going to be zero? And, and, and that's not acceptable. So all I do is I take this denominator and I say 2x plus 5 equals 0. Subtract 5. 2x equals negative 5. Divide by 2. x equals negative 5 halves or negative 2 and 1 half. So that's where um, we are not allowed, where we don't have any x values. What, is that what I'm saying? Where the graph does, is undefined. Where the graph is undefined. Okay, so you try um, two of these. 2 over x minus 1. Where is this undefined? And f of x equals 7 over... 3x plus 2. So this should maybe say f of x equals. Okay, find where these two are undefined. These functions are undefined. Um, go ahead and pause. Go. Okay, this first one, I'm just looking at the denominator and I set it equal to 0. x minus 1 equals 0. Add 1 to both sides. x equals 1. This is the value for which this function is undefined. Let's try this one now. 3x plus 2 equals 0, subtract 2, 3x equals negative 2, divide by 3, x equals negative 2 thirds. This is the value for which um, the function is undefined. Okay, now we got a bit of writing to do here, my friends. Identify asymptotes. Domain, x values, range included, y values. So um, we're just given a graph. And so we're going to do uh, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. And then um, we're going to do 5. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. So right here, at, uh, oh no, right here at this three, I'm gonna have a line, not line, but a, an as, a um, hyperbola, part of a hyperbola right there. And then I'm going to have another one come like this and like that. So here I'm looking at this graph and I say, oh, look, 
x equals 3, there's, there's an asymptote right there. So I'm going to say my asymptote is x equals 3. So that's my vertical asymptote. Horizontal asymptote, y equals 0. So there's my horizontal asymptote, there's my, y, uh, my um, vertical asymptote. My domain are my x values, so I'm going to look at my included x values, and they go from negative infinity to 3, negative infinity to 3, and then 3 to positive infinity, 3 to positive infinity. My domain, uh, my, gosh dang it, my range are my y values. And my asymptote here is at zero, so this goes all the way down, this goes all the way up. So negative infinity to zero, zero to positive infinity is my range. Okay, you try. One, two, one, two, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay. Now let's see here, right around here, I'm going to go like this, and I'm going to go like that, and I'm going to come this way and down that way. There we go. Not perfect, but okay. So I want my asymptotes, I want my domain, and I want my range. All right, go. Okay, here's my vertical asymptote at negative two. So my vertical asymptote is x equals negative two. My horizontal asymptote is here at y equals negative one. All right, hope you got that. My domain is negative infinity all the way to negative two. And then negative two. Notice I have the soft brackets because negative two is not included. Negative two to positive infinity. My range is negative infinity, my y values, all the way to negative one. And negative one to positive infinity. There we go. Okay, now, we are going to look at this last bit here, but it's fairly significant last bit, transformations. Okay, so we're going to write f of x equals a over x minus h plus k. We're going to draw some arrows here. So a, if a is less than 0, as in if a is a negative number, this reflects uh, reflect across horizontal asymptote. So it'll reflect across the horizontal asymptote, whatever that horizontal asymptote is. So it'll go broop, broop. Now, um, if a, if the absolute value of a is greater than one, so if this is negative two or two or eight or um, 10 over three, something like that, then it is stretched, uh, stretch vertically. So it gets elongated that way, taller, stretched vertically or squished horizontally, but we'll call it stretched vertically. Now, if a uh, uh, zero is less than, the absolute value of a is less than one. So if it's a fraction between zero and one, or zero and negative one, a fraction, they're like one half or two thirds, compressed vertically. So it'll get smashed this way and stretched out this way. Smashed. Okay. Whew. Okay. The k value, 
this is like always the same plus it goes up if it's minus it goes down also this k is going to equal my horizontal asymptote and it just moves up and down, moves vertically up and down, horizontal asymptote. Okay, now H, oh, this is the last thing we're gonna talk about on this part here is, um, if this is subtraction, as it shows here, subtraction, subtraction moves to the right, addition moves to the left. Now this gets a little bit complicated if there's a number here multiplied by the x, but I don't think we're going to have any of those, at least not today. Um, so um, you don't have to worry about it, but subtraction moves it to the right, addition moves it to the left. Now let's graph something. Remember, if you can't remember any of this stuff and you're told to graph something, just make a t-table and figure it out. Just make a huge t-table if you need to. 2 over four, uh, x minus 4 plus 2. Okay, so we're going to graph this thing, and we're only just going to do two of these examples. So remember, the parent graph looks like this. There's my parent. Now, if I go up two, then my asymptote moves up to here, and my parent graph, my new graph looks like this, right? Up two. So I've done that one, check. Now, what does this two do here? I'm not gonna worry about that yet. I'll look at that in a second. Let's move this again. So I've got x minus four, so that means I'm gonna go to the right, four, because it's subtraction. So one, two, three, four. There's my new vertical asymptote. So I've got my horizontal asymptote, my vertical asymptote. I'm gonna redraw Okay, I'm almost done. Now this two here for the A value, um, it's not negative, so it doesn't reflect across my um, asymptote but it does stretch vertically. So what that means is um, it's gonna get tighter into my, um, into the kind of the origin here, the new origin. So let's draw my asymptote a little bit more solid since, I, since I'm there. And so stretched vertically means that it comes in closer here like this. And if it was stretched horizontally or compressed vertically, then it would come away from um, this, the center there more. Anyway, we might see that. Oh, not, not yet. Okay, so here's your answer. That's it. Let's do another one. Let's do a U try. See if you guys can do this and then we'll be all done. F of X equals negative three over X plus one minus four. So draw your coordinate plane with, with nice big delineations. Put a little bit extra down here at the bottom because I have minus four. Oh, but I'm gonna flip it too, so anyway, no, right, go. Pause it and go, go, go. All right, let's see how you did. So I, I like this doing this negative four first. So I'm gonna go down four, one, two, three, four. There's my four, and there's my new horizontal asymptote. And that's not gonna change. So there it is, my horizontal asymptote. Now um, plus one, that means my vertical asymptote is gonna be here at negative one. Oh, we didn't 
talk about the domain and the range. Oh, no, we didn't need to. Okay, we weren't asked to. Okay. Uh, we did these two things. Check, check. Now we need to do this negative three thing. So let's draw what it would look like before we do this negative three thing. So it would look like, like this. But since this is negative, we're going to flip it across the um, asymptote here, the horizontal asymptote. And so then it's going to look like this now. And so now, it's, since it's being multiplied by 3, then it's going to come in much tighter to the axis there. And um, that's it. That's how you do it. Good. There was 8-3. Um, good luck on the homework, people. Do it. Do a good job with this stuff. All right. Go.